So let's move on to the further part of the appropriate. There is a forearm that is between elbow and then the wrist joint. So, so like your arm, so as we divided it into anterior compartment of the flexor compartment and the posterior of the extensor compartment by the deep fascia, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, the forearm is also divided into anterior or the flexor compartment and the posterior of the extensor compartment. This is that picture of the cut section of the forearm showing that these two bones, ulna and radius. Mm -hmm. So look at the difference between the position of the humerus and radius and ulna here. So here ulna is located towards one part of the forearm. So almost the whole of the posterior border of the forearm, uh, what is that? Ulna mm -hmm. is subcutaneous. You can find this here, right? Okay, subcutaneous, just below the skin. So that divides the anterior and posterior compartments on the medial side, whereas lateral side there is a deep fascia which runs between the radius and the skin. So dividing the forearm completely into two compartments, anterior and posterior. Now between the ulna and the radius there is a membrane. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. So if you see the skeleton, there is a gap between the ulna and the radius, right? This gap. So between this gap, these two borders, there is a membrane. There is a membrane that is called as interosseous membrane. Interosseous between the two bones. Okay. So that is called as interosseous membrane. So that forearm is completely divided into two compartments, which are totally separate from each other. Anterior compartment and posterior compartment. So let's study about these two compartments one by one. First, we'll go into the anterior compartment, are also called as the flexor compartment. So this is how your front of the forearm looks when you take out the skin and the deaf fascia. Okay? So showing all the muscles. So this belongs to extensor compartment. Okay? From here, this is flexor. And from here, this is extensor. The anterior and posterior compartment are not exactly anterior and posterior. So medial or the anterior begins from here. Okay, it goes like this. Whereas extensor from here it goes like this. Am I clear? Yes, yes. Okay. From here it begins the extensor. From here, medial side is the anterior compartment. Okay. So you can see here this is what is the bicipital aponeurosis. Some of you were asking yesterday, right? Bicipital aponeurosis. Part of the tendon of the biceps muscle forming an aponeurosis, which mixes with the deep fascia and goes to the posterior border of the ulna. So now these two compartments, anterior and posterior, it contains, they contain muscle, vessels and nerves. So we will look into these muscles, vessels and nerves. First let us begin with the anterior compartment. So the muscles, okay, the muscles, again this picture, yes this picture. So you all know, you already studied in the humerus, so I was telling you about the medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle and their supracondylar ridges. So I was telling you, medial epicondyle and medial supracondylar ridges, they give attachment to all the flexors in the forearm, right? That we call it as common flexor origin, whereas lateral epicondyle we call it as common extensor origin. So all the muscles of the front of the forearm, they take origin from the medial epicondyle, medial supracondylar ridge of the humerus and even some from the forearm bones also. But mainly many, they take origin from medial epicondyle and medial supracondylar ridge. So there are many muscles around, there are 19 muscles in the forearm. This forearm contains 19 muscles, okay, 8 in the front and 11 in the extensor compartment. So here, you need not bother much about the attachment, where they are attached and all. So you should remember common origin. So what is the common origin for flexors? Medial, medial epicondyle of the humerus along with the medial supracondylar ridge. What is the common extensor origin? Lateral epicondyle and lateral supracondylar ridge. Okay. So even insertion, insertion of all these muscles, they go to carpal, metacarpal and phalanges. Hope you are aware of the skeleton of the hand. So this is the skeleton of the hand consisting of, these are the bones, we call it as carpal bones. So these small bones, can you see them? Okay, they are called as carpal bones which make the rest here. Okay, there are eight bones. 
We'll go to that when you learn about the hand. And then you have, these are the metacarpal bones in the palm. Okay? These are the metacarpals. Whereas these palms, they are the phalanges, which form the skeleton of the finger. Each, phalan each finger is having three phalanges, which, which are demarcated by the skin creases. Proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, distal phalanx. Am I clear? Proximal, middle and distal phalanxes. And here, the metacarpals. And here, the carpals. Carpals, metacarpals and phalanges. All these muscles, both flexors and extensors, they go to either the carpal bones or the metacarpal bones or the phalanges in general. Okay? So, if you remember like this, this is enough. Okay? Except two muscles, which I am going to tell it later. We have to remember the attachment of those two muscles. Okay? Especially on the fingers. Phalanges. So, you have to remember just the names of the muscles which belong to flexor and extensor compartment and in a proper way. So from lateral to medial side. From lateral to medial side. Okay? So, from lateral to medial side, the first muscle that you find in the flexor compartment is pronate arteries. What is that muscle? Pronate arteries. Now, I will just name the muscles. The so first muscle here. See this? So that is the pronate arteries. Pronate arteries. The name only indicates the action. Pronation. Pronation. It is done doing the pronation. It will not go to carpal bones. It will not go to hand. It will just from the humerus ulna. It will go to the radius. It will not go to the hand. Okay. That is the first muscle. Pronate arteries. Pronate arteries. Next is flexor carpi radialis. What is that? Flexor carpi radialis. First, you remember the names of these fingers. What are these? This is called as thumb. 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 And anatomically, it is called as polysis. What is called as polysis? P O W L I C S. What is this? Polysis. So, what are the muscles which are named as polysis? They go to thumb. What is this called as? Index. Index finger. Very good. So, then is the middle. And this is the ring. This is the little finger, also called as the digiti minimi. What is this called as? Digiti minimi. Anatomically, it is called as digiti minimi, and this is called as polysis. Okay? So now, <coughs> and even this is called as radialis also. Okay? Flexor carpi radialis. What is that? Where is that? Flexor carpi radialis. First is pronate arteries. Pronate arteries. Next is flexor carpi radialis. And that is your palmaris longus. What is that? Palmaris longus. Palmaris longus. And then comes your flexor digitorum superficialis. So, some authors, they believe it's not exactly on the superficial. It is deep to these three, what I said. Pronate arteries, flexor carpi radialis and palmaris longus. So, you can, you can, you can just, you, you just, whatever the tendon you feel here is, this is the palmaris longus. Okay? So, pronate arteries, flexor distorum radialis, sorry, flexor carpi radialis, then palmaris longus, then flexor digitorum superficialis. What is that? Flexor digitorum superficialis and last is flexor carpi ulnaris. What is that? Flexor carpi ulnaris towards the ulna. Okay? So these are the five muscles in the superficial compartment. These flexor muscles in the front of the forearm are divided into superficial muscles and deep muscles. Okay? These are the superficial muscles. What I said? Just repeat them. Number one. Lateral to medial side. Lateral to medial side. First is pronate arteries. Then is flexor carpi radialis. Then palmaris longus. Deeper to this is flexor digitorum superficialis. And last is flexor carpi ulnaris. These five muscles. Okay. And the deep muscles. So here they have cut. So they have cut. You find? Okay. They have cut the superficial muscles. They have cut the superficial muscles to show the deep muscles. To show the deep muscles. The so deep muscles are three again. Number one, flexor pollicis longus. Flexor pollicis longus. Number two, flexor digitorum profundus. Flexor digitorum profundus. And number three, pronata quadratus. Here. Pronata quadratus. These are three muscles in the deep compartment. Am I clear? Flexor pollicis goes for the thumb. Flexor pollicis longus. Okay. Flexor digitorum profundus. So two digitorum. One is 
superficialis now it is profundus clear and last is pronator quadratus so these are eight muscles which are there in the flexor compartment flexor compartment which are divided into deep two deep and superficial superficial are pronator arteries flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus flexor distorum superficialis carpi ulnaris flexor carpi ulnaris deep or flexor pollicis longus flexor digitorum profundus and pronator quadratus pronator quadratus clear these are the eight muscles out of these eight muscles understand the insertion of two muscles okay so number one is flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum this is the picture showing individual muscles see here this is the pronator quadratus coming from humerus and as well as ulna going to the radius doing pronation the forearm is like this when this contracts see here from ulna and humerus to radius so when this contracts what do you expect you expect pronation okay and next is flexor carpi radialis going to this finger index okay and then palmaris longus palmaris longus much of its tendon it is expanded it is expanded so what is an expanded tendon called as expanded tendon is called as what sorry aponeurosis i was telling you yesterday expanded tendon like a ribbon it is called as aponeurosis so much of the tendon of the palmaris longus it expands to form what is called as palmar aponeurosis what is that called as palmar aponeurosis you will learn it when you go to the hand lecture okay palmar aponeurosis so muscle belly is very small very small very small so that's why this muscle palmaris longus is called as one of the degenerating muscle what is that muscle degenerating what do you mean by degeneration yeah which will go for completely it will disappear so some day maybe after 50 years or 100 years the future humans what you find they may not have this palmaris longus it may disappear in future so that's why it is called as palmaris longus because it doesn't have much function except its tendon forming the aponeurosis clear so that's why it is called as very few muscles are there in the body which are called as degenerating one is one muscle is plantaris in the leg okay so it's a degenerating muscle so palmaris longus is a what degenerating degenerating muscle degenerating muscle and next is flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum superficialis look at this muscle the tendon is divided into four four slips for this four fingers a single muscle dividing into four tendons that's why i'm telling you understand the insertion of this flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus okay divided into four tendons four tendons okay and then going to which the middle phalanx see here right here middle phalanx of each of these four fingers and how it is inserting before it is inserting it is dividing into two slips see there observe it closely see there just like the tongue of a snake as it goes near the middle phalanx it divides the single tendon divides and attaches to an either side of the an either side of the middle phalanx like this exactly like this okay this is the middle phalanx right okay this is the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis as it goes nearer to the middle phalanx it divides it divides and attaches on either side like this of the middle phalanx so now what happens the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus which is deeper muscle it goes between this it goes between this okay and then insert it to distal phalanx flexor digitorum profundus is also it also divides into four tendons for these four fingers how does it go this is superficialis splitting giving way for the profundus this goes for distal, distal phalanx you can you can do only the flexion of the distal phalanx right this is the profundus action whereas this is superficialis going to the middle phalanx okay like this clear this is the insertion of superficialis and profundus superficialis and 
profundus for the four fingers, medial four fingers. That's why it is called as digitorum because it gives insertion for the medial four digits or the fingers. Clear? Where is the superficial insertion? To the middle side, <coughs> middle phalanx, on either side of the middle phalanx by dividing or by splitting. Why it splits? To give way for the profundus, which goes for the distal phalanx. Distal phalanx, this phalanx. Clear? That is the superficial sign profundus. So this is about the superficial muscles. This is about the superficial and deep muscles I don't have I guess. Yeah. Okay, so this is the same insertion, profundus, okay? But it goes to the distal phalanx here, here. So this is about the muscles in the front of the forearm. Front of the forearm. All together, eight muscles, okay? So now, so, what is the nerve supply of these muscles? Yes? Uh, it goes, it goes uh, under the, the two parts divided. Yeah. So I said superficial is, I will show you in the lab, no problem. It splits. Okay? It splits and attaches to the middle phalanx. Okay. Whereas profundus goes between them. It goes to the distal phalanx. Okay? So what is the nerve supply? Yeah? So median nerve. Okay, so median nerve supplies all the muscles of the front of the forearm. All the muscles of the front of the forearm, all these eight muscles, except, except, there is exception. Flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris and medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. Medial half. This flexor digitorum profundus having dual nerve supply, like your brachialis. Okay, brachialis is supplied by. Axial and radial. Uh, brachialis brachialis or musculoskeletal. Musculoskeletal line? Uh, radial uh, ulna. Radial, radial nerve. Radial nerve. Two nerves supply a brachialis. Lateral half, radial nerve. Medial half, musculocutaneous nerve. Sometimes musculocutaneous medial. nerve is the nerve of anterior compartment. Right? Yeah. Yes. So similarly, flexor digitorum profundus, one of the deep muscles. Yeah? The triceps have two legs. You said before. No, triceps only one nerve. You said the long, radial nerve. Long, and, uh, mid, uh, long and medial head supplied by axial, axial, axial. No, 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 no. Radial nerve. Radial, radial nerve, nerve in the axilla. axilla. Same. Same nerve but in the... Uh, mm. radial, not axillary nerve. Mm. Radial nerve in the axilla. It gives branches which will go and supply the long and medial head. Uh. Whereas the same radial nerve supplies the lateral head but branch is given off in the spiral group. Yes, yes, okay, yes. that is the difference. Okay. So, flexor digitorum profundus is also having dual nerve supply, two nerves. Lateral half by median nerve, medial half by ulnar nerve. So, what are the two muscles which are supplied by ulnar nerve, front of forearm? No. Flexor carpi ulnaris, mm -hmm. medial half of flexor digitorum profundus. All other muscles are supplied by median, median nerve. So, all these are called as flexors. They do flexion, flexion of the wrist. So, this action is very important for who? The carpenter. You know carpenter? Bob. Who is carpenter? Bob. Bob. Wood. Yeah, who do your furnitures, your table, chairs, who do woodwork? Usually he will take a hammer and he will hit it yes. so to mm. make the furniture. As this action is by all these flexors and these nerve muscles are supplied by median nerve. Median nerve is called as carpenter's nerve. What is it called as? Carpenter's nerve. Whereas ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve which mainly supplies muscles in the hand. There are many small muscles in the hand. So like lumbricals, introsias, many muscles which move the thumb and little finger. These muscles in the hand are supplied by ulnar nerve. Okay? Because it doesn't have much supply in the forearm. It doesn't have any branch in the arm. Only one muscle here in the one and a half muscle in the forearm. But mainly it supplies muscles in the hand, which are very helpful with the action of these muscles is to do fine movements of the fingers. These all movements, okay, which are helpful in playing your musical instruments like guitar, piano, harmonium, tabla, everything, drums and all, okay. It is all by these movements of the fingers, which are done by the muscles in the hand, which are supplied by alnarna. That's why alnarna is called as Magician's nerve, magician's nerve. So magicians who use all these skillful movements of the fingers, 
these muscles which do these actions are supplied by allah that's why allah nerve is called as musician's nerve median nerve is called as carpenter's nerve right yeah so that blood supply blood supply which artery you find in the arm forearm which artery you find here in the forearm ulnar artery radial artery how does the brachial artery end where does it end how does it terminate ियर anterior interosseous artery and posterior interosseous artery anterior interosseous artery supplies deep muscles in the front of forearm posterior interosseous artery supplies deep muscles in the posterior compartment okay other branches from radial and ulnar artery will supply the muscles or the or you can say the front of forearm structures clear okay yes that's what i mentioned ulnar anterior interosseous artery ulnar branch and then the radial artery they supply So remember that point. Nerve supply very important. All the muscles in the front of the forearm, front of the forearm, or flexor compartment of the forearm, are supplied by median nerve, except except flexor carpi ulnaris and medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. I see many students busy in their mobiles. So now go to the posterior compartment. Posterior compartment. So just like that. So this is the posterior view. This, this is the posterior compartment. Starts from here. Okay. That is what is the lateral boundary of the cubital fossa? Yes, sir. Cubital fossa. What is the lateral boundary? Lateral brachioradialis. Uh, Very good. Brachio radialis. Brachio radialis. So starts from here. Okay. Brachio radialis. Like this, mm. it goes up to the posterior border of the ulna. Okay, that is the extensor compartment or the Medial posterior bone, compartment. Yes. Again, origin, common extensor origin. What is that? Lateral epicondyle and lateral supracondylar ridge. And mm. even some muscles take origin from forearm bones also. Mm. And insertion, carpal, carpal metacarpaline phalanges. phalanges. Clear? Yes. So now let's look into what are those muscles which are there in the extensor compartment there are 11 muscles how many 11 11 muscles six superficial five deep okay what well, let's look into what are those muscles is the list of muscles as i said first muscle brachioradialis brachioradialis brachium from the humerus radialis to the radius bone okay and then extensor carpi radialis longus extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi extensor carpi ulnaris these are the six superficial muscles just remember the names okay from lateral to medial side okay brachio radialis okay extensor carpi similar to your flexor carpi radialis here you have two one front you have only one here in the extensor side you have two one is Longer, longus. One is smaller, brevis. Clear? Extensor carpi radialis longus. Extensor carpi radialis brevis. And next is extensor digitorum. Like you were extensor, uh, sorry, flexor digitorum superficialis. This also extensor digitorum is similar to that. This all muscle also splits into four tendons on the extensor side. These two muscles on the flexor side. Okay. This extensor muscle it again splits. and then attached to middle phalanx okay that is the extensor digitorum for this medial four fingers okay and extensor digiti minimi goes to the little finger digiti minimi as i was telling you the anatomical name for little finger is digiti minimi and extensor carpi ulnaris same as flexor carpi ulnaris clear these are the six muscles in the superficial compartment and five in the deep one is supinata deep muscles number 1 When you cut these superficial muscles, go to deep. You find these five muscles. Number one is supinata, which do your supination. Which do your supination. Okay. Next is abductor pollicis longus. Pollicis, abductor. 
We will go to the movements in the next classes. Abductor, pollicis longus. This is adduction, this is abduction. Okay. And then extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus. Again, two muscles which do extension of the thumb. Okay. So many muscles for this brevis long. Thumb. See. So beautiful. Extensor pollicis longus and one is smaller that is brevis. There are even many muscles for the thumb in the hand itself, like opponents, digiting. There are many muscles in the hand also. We will learn that when you go to uh, what is that hand lecture. Okay. Nice. Next is extensor indices for this. So if you observe your fingers, which fingers have maximum freedom for the movement? It is the thumb, little and index. Right? Free movement. Maximum is thumb. So can you imagine your life without the thumb? No. <laughs> you cannot. So thumb is in such an important part of your life and even your part of the body. So that's why we believe the thumb as, as the revolution in evolution. What is that? Revolution in evolution. So we believe that we developed from monkeys. If you have, have you observed the hand of a monkey or a ape, how is it? How is it? We Observe it carefully. The thumb, we the thumb, that. yeah. We don't believe that. You don't believe it, but many we scientists there is, that. yeah. This is the evolution. It's just you know the human evolution, the science. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of hypotheses or theories which are put forth, mm -hmm. which we believe that we evolved from the monkeys. Okay. okay. First we were locking on four limbs, then quadruped, then biped, the facial appearance also changed, everything. So if you observe those hands, hands, <coughs> the thumb here in, in humans, in humans, in us, it is exactly opposite position to these four fingers. 90 degrees opposite to these four fingers, right? That's why it is possible for the grip and all these human skills. Human skills are possible due to the position of the thumb exactly 90 degrees to your opposite position to this rest of the four fingers. Whereas in apes, it is in line with the other four fingers. It is in line with the other four fingers. That's why those skillful movements are not possible in the monkeys. Okay, so that is the, that's why this in the process of evolution, thumb has shifted its position opposite to these fingers. So that's why all the skills, we humans have considered ourselves our allied group in the animal kingdom because of our skills and thinking abilities. So these two, the brain, evolution of the brain and the thumb has put us humans superior to all other animals, right? Yeah. Because of this thumb and our brain development. So, so many muscles, that's why those, so there are many muscles which will do the movement of this thumb which are helpful in our skillful movements. So we can write but monkeys cannot write. Right? Because the hand, the thumb is opposite to these fingers, the position. So that's why these skill movements. So that is the five muscles, supinator, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, and extensor indices. Extensor indices. These are the five muscles which are deep and six muscles which are superficial. Am I clear? Yes. So 11 muscles. So remember only the extensor digitorum. The insertion is like superficialis. Okay. So these are the again muscles. Picture, okay? So it's an individual muscle. See here? Extensor digitorum going to middle phalanx. Okay. No, it, it doesn't divide because there is no any other tendon which will go and uh, pass through it. Okay, it will just go and insert into the middle phalanx. These are the deep muscles. So nerve, which is the nerve of the posterior compartment? Radial, radial nerve. All the muscles, no confusion here. All the muscles are supplied by radial, radial nerve. nerve. Okay, remember this point. All the muscles of the Posterior compartment of the forearm is supplied by radial nerve. Okay, only confusion in the uh, and anterior, anterior. anterior median nerve. Yeah. So the artery again, posterior intraosseous oh. artery, and the branches from radial and ulnar arteries. Okay. 
So now coming to study of the individual nerves which are there in the forearm. How does the median nerve, its pores, ulnar nerve goes and radial nerve. So, so it will be the arch of the posterior. I will come to that. Wait. So median nerve, so you all know its origin and we have already learnt its course in the arm. Can anyone say about the course of the median nerve in the arm? Who is presenting the seminar? Some guy came to me. Yes. Can you tell that it's course of the median nerve in the arm? I didn't remember exactly, but I know. So what do you do in the seminar? Tomorrow is your seminar, right? Yeah, yeah. Then? Revision, I'll come in through tomorrow. I'll just put the slide and read it. This, sir. About the, all of the no, I am talking about your seminar. You should be talking facing the students, not facing the slides. You should talk from your mind, not from the slide. He will revise right? today. He will revise? One day will be perfect? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hope so. so, forearm. So, you know the median nerve takes origin from the two roots, right? Medial root and lateral root from the medial line, lateral cord of the brachial plexus enters the forearm first it lies lateral to the brachial artery then crosses the brachial artery from lateral to medial side at the cuboidal fossa cuboidal fossa median nerve is medial to brachial artery okay and then enter from here from the cuboidal fossa it enters the forearm how it enters it enters between the two heads of pronate artery it's very important from the examination point of view okay and maybe an mcq how it enters the forearm it enters between the two heads of pronate arteries. The one muscle at the side in the flex of compartment of the forearm, first muscle is pronate arteries. It arises by two heads. One head from the humerus and one head from the ulna. Between the two heads, it enters. It enters the forearm. How does the median nerve enter the forearm? Between the, Between the two heads of pronate arteries. Remember this point, okay? And then runs deep to, or you can say between flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus between them it runs okay and then comes out superficial in the at the wrist region lower part of the yes. forearm and then enters deep to flexor retinaculum i will come to that again it runs in the carpal tunnel it runs in the carpal tunnel we will learn about what is carpal tunnel later okay so enters the carpal tunnel where it divides into a deeper branch and then a superficial branch deeper branch supplies some muscles in the so hand the lecture. No, no, today's lecture, okay. later, little later, okay. And then superficial branch supplies this three and a half fingers, lateral three and a half fingers. Thumb, index, middle and half of the ring. Half of the ring finger are supplied by median nerve. You can see this in picture, see. The thena eminence, this is, the palm is having two eminences. This is the thena eminence and this is the hypothenar eminence. Between them is a cup shaped depression. Your hand if you observe. Okay. This all three and half is supplied by median nerve. And even the nail bed on the dorsal side also. Okay. So that is the median nerve. Okay. No branches in the arm. Median nerve doesn't give any branch in the arm. Very few branches to the elbow joint. And then all the branches in the forearm and hand. Clear? So next, the ulnar nerve. So before that, uh, so one branch in the forearm that is the anterior interosseous nerve, which runs along with the anterior interosseous artery to supply the deeper muscles. We we don't say it as anterior interosseous nerve. We call it as same median nerve only. So deeper muscles of the front of the forearm are supplied by anterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch of median nerve. Okay. So, median nerve, it is injured, commonly injured at two sides. Number one side, which you already learned. Where? Yes. Supracondylar fractures of the humerus. Supracondylar fractures, where it is there on the bone. Okay. So, when it is cut or fractured, especially in children, supracondylar fracture, I was telling you, the gunstock deformity. Yes. Okay. So, when they have kid falls on outstretched hand, usually they will have supracondylar fractures and the median nerve comes in between the two fracture ends and is injured. And when it is injured, what happens? The flexion is lost. Okay? And then the, the muscles here, mainly the thena or eminence, they go for paralysis and wasting. Wasting. Wasting means what? They will lose their 
bulk okay yes. so this prominence will not will be lost and it looks like ape's hand so i will show you that picture you will understand yes see here this prominence is not there because the muscles are paralyzed there they go for wasting so then it looks like ape hand ape hand ape you if you see the ape there is no cup shape like this it is flat so that's why ape like hand and absence of flexion okay this all happens whenever there is injury to median nerve injury to median nerve at the supracondylar fractures okay and even as i said the median nerve enters through the carpal tunnel what is the carpal tunnel if you observe this is the skeleton of the hand if you observe the palmar side of this carpal bones it is not flat it is like this cup can you see this yes okay it is like boat shape these carpal bones which are eight in number they are arranged in the form of a boat okay forming concavity on the anterior side mm -hmm. concavity on the anterior side exactly like this okay so all these muscles i said eight muscles their tendons has to pass through this very limited area see this wow. limited area here it is big okay all the tendons has to pass through this limited area in this short see here this carpal tunnel so whenever you flex flex your wrist there is chance of tendons coming out that is called as bow shrinking you know they may come out when you do the flexion okay so that is prevented by the deep fascia the deep fascia everywhere it is there deep fascia here at this region it thickens like a ligament strong fibrous tissue which bridges this tunnel okay like this this is the called as the flexor retinaculum what is this called as flexor retinaculum now it is a tunnel see this tunnel formed by carpal bones this is called as carpal tunnel this is called as carpal this is called as carpal tunnel so through this tunnel all these tendons and this even median nerve runs median nerve runs okay as they are running in a short tunnel so what do you yesterday explain definitely when these tendons move there will be friction mm -hmm. to avoid that friction to avoid that friction what will be there oil can i was calling you about the bursa and the synovial membrane yes, so yes, bursa. all these tendons they are covered by synovial membrane as they are passing through <laughs> this tunnel a short tunnel whenever there is a movement there is friction to avoid that friction they are covered by smooth Sorry. membrane synovial which even secrete some synovial fluid also to avoid the friction between the tendons mm. okay that synovial Mem membrane if something happens if there is any injury here uh -huh. okay then there is edema injury to these tendons they will cause edema so when this nerve nerves and vessels they are passing here one tendon goes for edema enlargement what happens it will cause pressure on the other structures yes. it will cause pressure on the median nerve very important structure which is going through causing rise to paralysis, paralysis of the muscles in the thinar eminence and even anesthesia yeah. over these three and a half digits okay so this injury to median nerve in the carpal tunnel is called as carpal tunnel syndrome it's called as carpal tunnel syndrome am i clear okay that is what is one of the injury to median nerve in the carpal tunnel So next go to ulnar nerve. Yes, so ulnar one also it runs at the elbow region. It is behind the medial epicondyle, right? Medial epicondyle, and then enters the forearm between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris. It enters the two heads between uh, uh, flexor carpi ulnaris. Runs into the forearm. along with the ulnar artery first it lies deep to digitorum profundus median nerve is between superficialis and profundus it is deeper to profundus okay up to the middle of the arm and then in the distal part of the forearm it becomes superficial it becomes more superficial just below the skin okay and then enters the forearm uh, sorry hand superficial to this retinaculum i said this is the tunnel and this is the retinaculum ulnar nerve is not injured here in the wrist region why because it does not enter the carpal tunnel it goes above the 
retinaculum. So it is not injured there. Okay. The, after the entering the hand, it divides into again two branches: superficial cutaneous branch and the deep branch, which supplies many muscles in the hand. And superficial branch supplies one and half. The rest, one and half on the palmar side as well as dorsal side. Palmar side as well as dorsal side. Whereas median nerve. Three and off on the palmar side, and only the nail beds, or you can say the distal phalanx. Whereas rest is by radial nerve. Rest is by radial nerve. Am I clear? Whereas one and half both on the palmar side and the dorsal side by the ulnar nerve. Palmar side three and off, median nerve, and even the dorsal phalanx also. Dorsal side of the distal phalanx. Whereas rest by dorsal side of the hand is by radial nerve. Hmm? This is hand, okay? This three hand off, one, two, three and half of the ring finger, and even the the palm, three and half. It is by median nerve. This one and half by the ulnar nerve, even the hypothenar side, and even on the dorsal side also, one and half ulnar nerve. Whereas this three and half. On the dorsal side by the Maybe radial nerve, radial. except this distal part. This is by same median nerve. It goes like this, and then even supplies the dorsal nail bed. Mm. Okay. So that is the story about the ulnar nerve. So ulnar nerve is distribution mainly in the hand. Median nerve in the front of forearm. Radial nerve in the back of the arm as well as back of the forearm. So these are all like in the branches. See there. See, observe this one and off, both on the dorsal side as well as the palmar side. Alnar <coughs> nerve. So what happens whenever there is injury to alnar nerve? Okay, especially in the fractures of the medial epicondyle. Okay. So it causes claw hand. Claw hand. What is that? Claw hand. So claw hand exactly looks like this. Oh, just like the you know the claws of the eagle, mm -hmm. okay. So it looks like that. That deformity is called as claw hand deformity. Ape like hand deformity, median nerve. Claw yeah. hand deformity, ulnar nerve. What is this? Wrist drop, radial nerve. Remember this. Ape hand, median nerve injury. Claw hand, ulnar nerve. Wrist drop, radial nerve. Okay. The radial nerve, same story again. It front uh, lateral epicondyle enters the forearm. Immediately after entering the forearm, it divides into two. Superficial line <coughs> D. D. Superficial supplies all the back of the forearm skin, and even as I said, three and off on the dorsal side. Okay. D prime supplies all the muscles, or the posterior <coughs> interosseous nerve. Anterior interosseous nerve branch of median. Posterior interosseous nerve branch of radial supplies all the extensor muscles. Okay. You have to revise it again and again. You have to read it this topic today itself. If you postpone it tomorrow, you will forget 50 percent. If you postpone it one more day, then all everything is lost. Again, you have to read afresh. So that's why my suggestion is go back home today only. You will revise about this lecture so that you will remember all the points. The lab should be in the same in the same in the same day.